Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Quincy from AFC North Talk here to kind of wrap up everything that happened on Sunday. Um, I may or may not do a separate video just breaking down what happens in the Baltimore game, depending on how my schedule goes. Um, but let's talk about the results from Sunday. We'll start with Pittsburgh versus the New York Jets. And look, there's no other way to say this. This game was all Pittsburgh all the way. Um, they're playing good football right now whether it's justin fields or russell wilson and look i was a i was a um skeptic of russell wilson to say the least and his ability to be successful for the pittsburgh steelers this year and he played about as well as i could have thought he could have played in this kind of environment really played well coming off an injury gotta give him a lot of credit for that um found open guys threw the ball quite accurately like this was kind of vintage Russell Wilson. The question is, is this going to be the Russell Wilson we're going to consistently see in Pittsburgh, or is this going to be a highlight game from Russell Wilson? Um, George Pickens, I think I was talking to Jared about this a couple of weeks ago, and I compared George Pickens to like a problem, a problematic artist because yeah, George Pickens will drive you crazy and George Pickens will do things that will make you want to get out of town. And then George Pickens will drop a game like this one and you feel like you can never let him go. And that's what George Pickens did today. Um, well, Sunday, he dropped the game that you, you can't ignore. I mean, it was a spectacular game from George Pickens. He had, what, over 100 yards, a touchdown, and five receptions. <laughs> it's crazy. Nine targets, five receptions, 22 yards per target. He was incredible in this game. Russ did a good job spreading the ball out, got the ball to both of his tight ends. Um, and, and again, really, really utilized uh, George Pickens, especially in the red zone, quite well there. Another player that gets a lot of uh, disrespect on the show that showed up, Najee Harris. I mean, 4.9 yards a carry. It's a legitimately great number there for 21 carries, 102 yards and a touchdown and ran hard. Ran hard. Last two weeks, Najee been running without them jeans on. And you could tell he's been running loose and free. Um, and then Jalen Warren right behind him, 12 carries, 44 yards, 3.7. I expect him to play better as he gets more and more healthy here. Um, if I'm looking at this from like the Jets perspective, I would be concerned. Um, you know, we thought Aaron Rodgers was going to look pretty good this year based on how he started the season. But right now, I mean, he looks like he's struggling the interceptions are going up for him and if you notice with any quarterback that ages no matter how well they age the thing that always goes up with age is interceptions like that's the first tell that a quarterback especially a pocket passer is aging every single pocket passer once they got older those interceptions went up especially touchdown and interception ratio Right now, Aaron Rodgers is on 10 touchdowns, seven interceptions on the season. In this game, he threw two interceptions, one touchdown. Again, Pittsburgh has a good defense, and I thought they played really well here against the New York Jets, especially when they weren't tasked with tackling Brees Hall for whatever reason. They could not get a hand on him, um, especially in the receiving game. But other than those big plays by Brees Hall, you really didn't get hurt too much by this Jets offense. Um, Pittsburgh's a legitimately good team. You know, my one big thing that I was worried about with them early in the season was, hey, can they beat a team by multiple scores? Can they go up and put up 30? Last two weeks, two different quarterbacks put up 30-plus, beat two teams down, um, teams that you can argue they should beat down at this point, but nah, I didn't pick them to win against the Jets, so I can't say that. Um, yeah, I mean, that, what more can I say about Pittsburgh at this point? They're a legitimately good team. They're a legitimate playoff contender in the AFC, and we'll see how much further they take it. But they're getting really good football right now, and they're playing some of their best football right now. They're going to play the New York Giants next week, after that the Commanders, and then things are going to get tighten up a little bit, right? You get the Commanders, you get the Ravens. The Browns aren't going to be much of a threat. Uh, the Bengals, and then the Browns again, the Eagles, like – Pittsburgh could win a division this year. It's not a joke. Um, the, the rest of the schedule is not 
as difficult as it projected out to be, right? Even a game like versus the Chiefs seems very winnable for a team like Pittsburgh at this point, even though the Chiefs have not been beaten yet. They have looked like the most beatable undefeated team that we've seen since like, what was that last 2014 Florida State, right? Where they were like unbe undefeated when they got to the playoff, but then got beat pretty easily by an Oregon team. Um, but nonetheless, my 2014 football references aside, Huge showing from Pittsburgh. Um, and look, they're in first place in the AFC North, and they look like a first place team in the AFC North. Um, you know, thought Russ switching to Russ might hurt, hurt the offense. They scored 37 points this week, so it didn't hurt the offense at all. Um, defense still strong. They might got something there in Pittsburgh, at least for this year. We'll see what happens for the rest of the season. But right now, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say otherwise about the Pittsburgh Steelers as much as it hurts my soul to, to have to be at that place um, because I am a Steelers hater because I'm a Browns fan at, at the end of the day. Let's talk about the Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, if you're Cincinnati... I don't know how much you take away from this game because at this point the Browns are such a spectacle that you can't take anything that you accomplish against them very seriously. The Browns defense, I thought, did a really good job on the Cincinnati Bengals offense for most of this game. Um, what Cincinnati had 21 points. Seven of those points were from a kick return. So Cincinnati's offense only really scored 14 points. It's a good showing by the Browns defense there. Special teams for the Browns was a disaster this one. They gave up. 11 points right seven points on the kick return they missed the extra point and they missed a field goal early in this game a sub 50 yard field goal early in this game which I'm, I'm shocked not enough people are talking about dustin hopkins having to go but the browns have enough issues to talk about so i guess that one's just going to fly under the radar here cincinnati i mean the offense i didn't see any like giant problems i just thought they were struggling against a browns defense at times that has historically done pretty well against them. I didn't think Joe Burrow looked bad in this game or like T Higgins or anybody looked bad in this game. You know, I, I don't walk away thinking the Bengals offense has issues defensively. I don't know what you take away from this game. If you're the Cincinnati Bengals, because outside of the drive that unfortunately Deshaun Watson popped his Achilles on Deshaun was really unwilling to test the Bengals deep or intermediate. A fun fact in this game Jameis Winston played one drive in this game. Deshaun Watson played basically the whole first half. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson played pretty much the whole second half. So of those three quarterbacks, Jameis Winston had the most pass attempts in the intermediate area of the field, the most pass completions in the intermediate area of the field, and the most first downs via throwing the ball in the intermediate part of the field. Jameis Winston was out there for one drive. This tells you about where the mindset was for the other for the bulk of these 52 pass attempts that the Browns had, right? So 40, what, 41 of the 52 pass attempts were just dink and dunk central. Like Deshaun Watson got his average up to about seven and a half. We're talking about with DTR averaging about 3.4 yards per pass attempt there. Um, so obviously not a great number there. The Browns run game wasn't able to get going as well. And this is the second week where I think Cincinnati can feel good about their run defense after having a horrible start to the year. Nick Chubb played in this game, 11 carries, 22 yards. Felt like Nick Chubb was really still getting acclimated to playing. So I don't know how much to take that with. Like This is the whole kind of thing here with Cincinnati. I don't know how seriously to take this defensive performance from them, not because they did anything wrong, but just because the Browns are so ser unserious, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, the Browns are just a disaster on this side of the ball. Um, we, we had all these conversations on my channel about the fans booing Deshaun Watson when he went down. I'm pretty sure that'll get brought up again during AFC North Talk, so I'll kind of save that conversation for there. It's just a mess here in Cleveland. It's just an absolute unmitigated mess here in Cleveland. Even the most doomsday of doomsday predictions for the Cleveland Browns this year. Didn't expect them to be this much of a mess. They're one in six. They're one in six and they really shouldn't be one in six, but they keep doing things that kind of justify them being one in six at this point. So, it's really all there is to say uh, about the division at this point. Um, Cincinnati, maybe they're going to be on a run here, but like Baltimore looks good right now, and so does Pittsburgh. 
And I don't think the division is really in play for Cincinnati anymore, right? I think they're more or less kind of pulling for a wild card spot here because they're probably going to get the nine or 10 wins by the end of the season. Um, I think Pittsburgh is probably going to get to 10 or 11 wins at this point. Uh, if they continue to look like they have in the first half of this season and the same thing's true with Baltimore, they're probably going to get to 10 or 11 to 12 wins. Um, so I don't think the division is in play for Cincinnati, but they will certainly be in play for a playoff spot here. Look, they have the Brown. They play, They beat the Browns this week. They play the Philadelphia Eagles, who are just as much as a mess as the Cleveland Browns are right now. Um, and the Raiders, who are even more of a mess uh, than the Eagles, at least. Not the Browns. I think the Browns are probably the biggest mess in football at this point. But that's two games right there. I expect the Cincinnati Bengals to win. That would give them over 500. And then they play the Ravens, the Chargers, and the Steelers, and the Cowboys. We'll see what kind of football Dallas is playing by the time they get there. But you know those three games are going to be kind of tough for them, two of them on the road. Um, you know, still the, the Bengals probably have the toughest stretch of all the AFC North teams that are in contention for the North at this point. And uh, I think that's probably why they're not going to win the division. But there's still going to be a playoff threat, and with Joe Burrow in the playoffs, anything's possible. I believe they got to the they got to the Super Bowl as a wild card team, right? So they didn't play any home games the year they got to the Super Bowl. So anything is possible if the Bengals get some start playing some good football during the playoffs with Joe Burrow, um, especially if this defense starts playing better. But yeah, that's kind of my thoughts about the AFC North, uh, at least on Sunday. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night.